I'm replacing this reversing valve today. Um, just pulling a vacuum on everything, why not? I mean, got to get the pump out anyway. I don't feel like getting out my subcooler and getting all that hooked up. So if I have a problem with pressures, I'm going to do a bit of a push-pull to see if I can alleviate that. Uh, I am going to be switching the reversing valve. Um, it, it was intermittently not working. Now, this is an odd problem. So this is a train high efficiency unit supposed to be in heat <laughs> something odd going on here <laughs> but it it should be fine or hopefully today the reason I do that is because in very rare cases I have had refrigerant get trapped in units like this um, without exercising the reversing valve so I try to do that when I can I finished the recovery now it's time to replace the RV I'm very bummed I can't find my Klein cable cutters I pretty god I didn't lose them but that, that that's what I prefer to use on this but I'm gonna use these instead channel locks and a pair of bulldog snips it'll be a bit more relatable I feel like most of you guys probably have this but not necessarily the cable cutters so let me show how I go about doing this now the idea with everything for me is to always cut it out if you can cut it out and then you just unbraze the stubs doesn't matter whether it's TXV compressor reversing valve whatever always cut it out if you can so obviously the jaws on tin snips don't open very far so I have to crush this down first I'm gonna do it close to the reversing valve so that I'm not deforming the bell up here Now that that's free, I want to try to pull this out just a bit. That's going to help me braise it in. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to cut out all these and I'll speed that up so it doesn't take forever. All right, there we go. Easy peasy. All right, I had a very unfortunate setback. The stem snapped off of my acetylene tank. Uh, it was the gorilla that tightened that on. <laughs> I gotta blame it on a helper, couldn't have been me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't recommend that anybody do this, but what I did was take off the nut because it was snapped off flush with this and loosen it like that. And then I will uh, get it open, put this back on, and I'll return the tank as soon as possible. Okay, it's unbrazing time, and yes, I am flowing nitrogen during this process, so let's get these stubs out of here. By the way, the best thing I've found for wet rags is just a collapsible dog bowl because these fit really nicely in your torch set and just crush them down, throw it in there. Done with the unbrazing now. And let me just say something uh, to you young fellers out there. Don't be an ignoramus. <laughs> Take care of your body. See, knee pads on concrete, and I'm using this fan here to blow the fumes away. Not only is this fan great for keeping cool on the roof and whatnot, but you don't want to be breathing this shit in. Just, just try to do every simple little thing you can to take care of yourself.
what I'm doing here is I'm kind of turning it so that it looks like it's going to be flush against the coil once it gets pushed back but I've got all the stubs down now so let's get to brazing what I like to do here is cut strips of rag okay and wrap those around the exact area where I'm brazing Take a bigger rag, just wrap that over the entire valve. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to flow nitrogen during this process, I'm just going to purge and that's more than fine. I have a video, I'll put a link in the description where I demonstrate why that works, okay? And it works very well. The reason I'm not gonna flow nitrogen is because the risk of back pressure is just too great. I'm not gonna do that and risk getting pinholes in my, in my braze joints. And some of these pinholes can take a while to show up. You know, they can cause a leak six months, a year down the road. I'm gonna make sure everything is purged every time that I go to braze. And there will be no oxidation in the pipe. Uh, if you don't believe me, watch the video. All right, let's get going. Another thing related to taking care of your health, wear glasses as you're brazen. Don't sit there and just look at that flame all day. I re-wet all the rags and then it's freshly wrapped. I'm gonna purge this real quick and then throw the cap on there. There's no reason to leave my hose. And I've pre-bent my brazing rod in the exact orientation I need to get back in there and just go ahead and do a dry run like this and make sure it's perfect. So I'm gonna braze mostly with this straight end until I go around to the back and then I'll flip over the braze rod and do that. Let's get cracking. There's a couple spots on the sides that aren't as thorough as I would like, so I'm going to hit it again. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Moving on. There's a spot in the back I don't like, so I'm going to hit that. Got it. So I'm gonna push everything back and then fit this one. 
You know, I, I will say if you don't have a rosebud, you really need to get yourself a rosebud. One of the keys with brazen in difficult stuff is just to make sure that you have plenty of heat to wrap around the pipe, plenty of heat, you know, so that uh, you're not having to stay in a particular area for too long. It's kind of counterintuitive, but when you have a torch that adds a lot of heat, it helps keep the component cool because you're able to complete the joint without a bunch of heat transferring up to your component. Looks good. But you see how close that filter dryer is to the thermostat wire and everything. What I'm gonna do is put down this piece of sheet metal and then I'm gonna put this underneath of it because the sheet metal will get hot and it can still melt the wire. But with this pad underneath, you, you're pretty much good to go. Helps to bend these pipes in so that they put pressure against whatever you're brazen in and so when it when the braze turns liquid whatever you're doing doesn't just fall apart i have it under 50 psi nitrogen now and using the big blue on it i only do 50 to start out because if i have a leak i just don't want to waste my whole tank of nitrogen i will take it up higher after this but i have no leaks uh, everything's looking good. I've talked about this before, but you know, it, this being a smaller system, eh, it's okay, but I, I don't like leak searching by pressure drop, although that is a valid way to do it. I always like to spray everything because you would be amazed at how long it takes for a pressure drop on a large system when you've got a very, very small leak. She's completely leak free. Awesome. All right, I, I may or may not film anything else. I mean, everything else is pretty straightforward, just pulling a vacuum and whatnot, boring stuff. All right, hopefully those tips and tricks helped.